So this video will talk about mutations, which is the fourth section of the first unit of higher argument. Um, it's quite a short topic, but it can be quite tricky when it comes to the wording of things. So it will rely on some of the National 5 content. So it will rely on you knowing what a mutation is, which is a change in genetic material. Now that could mean either the genes that are involved in genetic material, so bases within those, or it could talk about chromosomes. Now you also need to know what mutagenic agents are, so things that would really um, or increase sorry, the rate of mutations. So mutagenic agents would then increase the rate. Now, the mutations can happen naturally and they just happen spontaneously, but mutagenic agents would be things that would then cause that to happen much faster. So things like X-rays, UV rays, um, nicotine, chemicals like mustard gas as well, gamma rays, etc, etc. So there are a lot of these that would then increase the rate. Now the main parts of the higher course that you need to know about for this are the types of mutation that we discuss. And they're under two headings. And the first one will be single gene. So these mutations are just known as single gene mutations. And they're known as single gene mutations because they affect um, one, on, or one gene only. And a gene is made up of bases and therefore nucleotides that attach to those bases. So anytime we talk about single gene mutation, the sequence of nucleotides changes. So therefore, when we talk about any of these and there's examples of any of these, they will refer to the bases. Okay, so you'll see A, T, G and C. Or if they talk about um, mRNA codons, you'd see a U there instead of a T. So we have a bit of a memory trigger for these. And that memory trigger is the short name SID, so SID. Now the S in this stands for substitution. Now substitution, very generally, although there are three different examples within this, substitution very generally is that one amino, or sorry, one nucleotide is replaced by another. Now within substitution you have three examples um, of different substitution mutations because of their effect being different. So within substitution you have what's known as missense. Missense means that when one nucleotide is replaced for another, one amino acid would then be changed for another. Now because it is only one amino acid and a full protein that is changed, it has very little effect on the protein. Because only one tiny bit in that protein is changed. So generally it wouldn't affect it hugely. Now sometimes that can be the case where it can affect them a bit more than you'd expect. But in the general case, it's very little effect on the protein. The next one is nonsense. Where one nucleotide is still replaced by another, but the problem with this one is that it changes one amino acid codon, so a codon that would code for an amino acid. It changes it for a premature stop codon. Now, it's described as a premature stop codon because that happens way earlier in the chain of amino acids and amino acid codons than it should. So because of that, because it's premature and it happens earlier, that protein is shorter. And because it is far shorter than it should be, it doesn't function the same way. And that can be really dangerous and really damaging to a person that has that. The last type of substitution mutation is called splice site. Now from gene expression we know that splice site or splicing is when we cut introns out 
and we glue exons together. So when this happens, when split state mutations happen, one nucleotide is replaced by another, but then that creates introns or exons incorrectly. And therefore, the protein would contain amino acids that it shouldn't. And because of that, the protein can be non-functional. So the protein can be made, but it might not work. And it's likely not to work because it has far extra information, far more extra information than it should have in it. Okay, so we've covered splicing, nonsense and missense. They are all substitution mutations. Okay, so we've covered the S part of the SID. Now the other two parts, I and D, are what's known as frame shift mutations. So before I do that, I'll write down the insertion one. So I is for insertion. Okay, now we're always referring to nucleotides here. So insertion is when one or more nucleotides are added to a gene or to a chain of nucleotides. And because you add a nucleotide in, every single base or every single nucleotide after that mutation is changed because there are three groups or groups of three, so codons, that would then all have a knock-on effect on that. Okay, now the same idea happens for deletion, which is the D of SID, except one or more nucleotides is lost. Now these collectively are known as frame shift mutations. Now, if I give you an example of each of these, if we had an original strand of DNA, and that original strand was ATG, GCA, and ATT, if I had a substitution mutation, that would then change one of these nucleotides for another. So as an example of that, almost all of this chain is the same, except this time, this thymine nucleotide, thymine base in a nucleotide, has been changed for adenine. Now that would mean then that the codon that is um, paired with us, with complemented base pairs with us, would then be incorrect, and therefore the amino acid would be incorrect. Okay, now that might then mean that you have a missense mutation, which means that you get the wrong amino acid in. Or if the codon that paired for this then led to it being a premature stock codon, your protein would be much shorter. Okay, or if this was an error that told it to splice incorrectly, then it'd be a splice site mutation. Now if I go back to this original strand, and I then have an insertion mutation, so I'm just going to copy the same strand as above, out of ATG, GC, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a nucleotide here. So I'm going to add in an extra C instead, and then continue on the chain. Now note how here, I've got this extra cytosine in here, which has been inserted into the chain of nucleotides. Now that then means that every single nucleotide following on from that is changed. Deletion does the same thing. So if I had my original strand here, original DNA strand, I would have ATG, GCA, and then AT, and we've lost one T. That deletion then makes that shorter. So every nucleotide and every therefore codon would move up and that every codon after that and therefore every amino acid would be changed. So these are all the single gene mutations. When we talk about 
um, chromosome structure mutations, which is our other type, they are quite different in terms of the descriptions. So, in terms of chromosome structure, rather than discussing nucleotides now, we talk about a section or an area of chromosomes. Now, because a chromosome contains sections, these will contain genes. So, for example, if you have a homologous chromosome, so homologous means matching, you'd have sections on this, which are represented by A, B, C and D. Okay, they're homologous because they have the same genes. So A is, could be a gene, B could be a gene, C, for example. These are homologous because they are matching. Now, when we have homologous chromosomes, and we have a chromosome structure mutation that happens within them, sections of this can be lost. Now, because of that, all of these could be lethal because they massively affect the protein production. So it might be that no protein is produced or the protein is non-functional. Now, our memory trigger for chromosome structure mutations is what's called DDIT. Now, it's easy to remember some of these because when it comes to the first D in this list, it's the same as in the previous one. So D is for deletion. Now in this, rather than talking about nucleotides being lost, this time we're talking about chromosome structure mutations. So it would talk about sections of a chromosome like I've got here. So a section of a chromosome would be lost this time. Okay, I'll give you some examples on the side in a wee sec. The next one would be duplication. Now again, we always talk about sections of chromosome. And this time is a section of chromosome from its homologous partner that it has gained. So a section of a chromosome is added from its matching partner. So it's homologous chromosome. Okay, the I in this is what's known as inversion. Now inversion means to flip or to reverse. So this would be the section of chromosome is reversed. And the final one is what's called translocation. And again, we start talking about section of a chromosome. So that section of a chromosome is gained, but this time, not from its homologous partner, but from a non-homologous chromosome. So from a different chromosome. So from a non-homologous chromosome. So therefore it would have different letters for different sections. So for example, if I show you the original chromosome, which is unmutated. It would contain the sections A, B, C, D, E, and then F. Now for deletion, your then section of a chromosome could look like this. You have lost that section, that E section. Okay. For duplication, if we look back at our original chromosome, note now we have a duplicated area, which is the same as the letters that would be matching to it in the chromosome. So for example, in their homologous partner here, 
and it has gained that section from its homologous partner. Now inversion would look at the same original chromosome strand or chromosome sections. And the version would then be something like this, where that section has been flipped around. And finally, translocation is very easy to spot in a diagram because you would have your normal section of chromosome, like your original strand, but then it would have X, Y and Z, which would be added from its non-homologous partner. Okay, so that's covered all the different types of mutation and has covered exactly the effects of them as well. So we'll always refer back to these and the effect on the protein. Chromosome structure, particularly bad, but so are most of the single gene ones.